Hey bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to bring you my April reading wrap up. It feels a little weird talking to a camera because it's been probably about three weeks since I've done this. I went out of town like mid April so I had pre-filmed a couple things before I left and I haven't filmed since then because I've been dealing with some stuff in my personal life. I talked a little bit about it at the very beginning of my live stream that I did last week or at least at the time of filming it was last week but I've got some stuff going on with my eyes and I haven't been able to edit any videos lately and so because I haven't been able to edit things I haven't really been filming. So even though this video is coming to you a little bit late, I really wanted to talk to you about the books that I read in April and what I thought of them. I read a total of four books in April, and considering I was out of town for almost a week, I'd say that's pretty good. I never know how it's gonna go when I go out of town. Sometimes that means that I read a lot, especially on the days that I travel, I tend to read a lot. But then during the time that I'm visiting someone or some place, I never know how much reading I'm gonna get done. So while I had hoped that maybe I'd get extra reading done, I'm glad that I didn't get less reading done than normal. Out of these four books, two of them were five stars and two of them were four stars. So overall, a really solid reading month. As always, I will have timestamps in the description box for each book that I talk about. That way you can jump around to the books that you're most interested in hearing about. In my monthly wrap ups, I always talk about my books in the order that I read them. So the very first book that I finished in April was Towers of Midnight by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, which is the 13th book in the Wheel of Time series. And I gave Towers of Midnight five out of five stars. I had this book in three formats, all of which I own. So I have the ebook, the audiobook, and a physical copy. And I mostly listen to this on audiobook because I love the narrators, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. This being the 13th book in a series, I can't say a whole lot about it, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the pacing of this one was a little bit slower than the book before it. And I think that overall I enjoyed it slightly less than book 12, but I still really liked it. While there was a lot of things happening in this book, there was also a decent amount of setup going on, which makes sense because it's setting up all the things that need to happen in the final book of the series. When I was reading this book, I attempted to annotate it by using different colored page tabs. This is the first time I'd ever tried to do anything like that and it was a lot of fun. I didn't do it for the whole book just because there was so much of it that I was listening to on audio, but I did it for a lot of the book and it was a lot of fun to look back on what I had tabbed. There were so many of my like funny tabs. So many times where different characters, mostly Matt, made me laugh about things. It made me want to go back and reread the series again, which I totally plan to do one day. But when I do go back and reread the series, I'm definitely going to be tabbing things because it's just a fun way to read. I read this, of course, as part of my Wheel of Time read along or what along that I am co-hosting with Roya from Unicorn Hunter Books. We did already have our live show for this book last month in April. I'll leave a link to to it in case you missed it and want to check it out. But it is a spoiler filled chat about book 13. So don't watch it unless you've read it. I am currently in the middle of reading the last book in the series, A Memory of Light. And we're going to be having our live show for it very soon, probably before I'm able to get this video out. And I am so excited to be finally finishing this series. All right, the next book that I finished in the month of April was The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin, which I gave five out of five stars. This book is really short. I have a physical copy of it, which is what I mostly read out of, and I didn't bring it in my room with me, so I can't show it to you. It's not a very pretty copy because I got it used at a library book sale. But my point is, is that it's a really short book, but it really packs a punch. I also had access to the audiobook of this through Scribd, and I did probably 50-50 between audiobook and physical book, maybe a little more physical reading. I'd have to say that the audiobook was pretty good. This was a book that I pulled out of my TBR jar, and it had been on my TBR for a really long time, so long, in fact, that I really didn't remember what it was about like at all. I didn't know what genre it was. I didn't remember anything about it. I only knew that I had put it on my TBR because a lot of people had said that they loved this book. Well, it turns out that this is an adult contemporary fiction about a man who owns a bookstore named A.J. Fickery. At the beginning of the book, A.J. Fickery is dealing with some grief because his wife had died, I think over a year ago or something. 
in editing, I realized that I said a little too much and I gave away something that's not in the synopsis of the book. So let's just say that AJ Fickery receives a mysterious package that changes his life. I don't think I want to say too much more about the plot because it is such a short book, but I would say that the story is a bit of a slice of life type of book. And it touches on a lot of different topics. It has a lot of little like tidbits or like lessons about life that I really appreciated. One of the things that I loved about this book is there's definitely a bit of a found family trope in it. You meet all of the different people in AJ Fickery's life and at the beginning of the book they're really not very important to him but as the book progresses all of these people have a special bond with him for different reasons and I just really loved seeing that progress throughout the book. Another thing that I loved about the, the book, and I think this is a reason why so many people have talked about it and recommended it, I just didn't remember it, is that this book has a lot to do with books. Obviously, AJ Fickery owns a bookstore, and one of the characters in this book is someone who works for a publisher who comes to his bookstore and is trying to get him to carry some of the books from that publisher. And they talk about arcs, and they talk about book sales and different genres of books. AJ Fickery is very specific in his reading taste and they talk about that. At the beginning of every chapter there's a little book review that AJ Fickery has written which I found really fun to read. I will say that looking at some of the reviews on Goodreads I think those reviews in the book might spoil some things about some of the books that they talk about. I wasn't particularly spoiled for anything, but I did see that mentioned in some of the reviews. But it was also really fun because if you've read some of those books that he's reviewing, you know what he's talking about and it's just like a fun little piece. This book made me laugh multiple times. It made me cry at the end. It was really heartfelt and really touching and I wasn't really expecting that going into it. I gave this book five stars, but it's definitely more of like a four and a half that I rounded up to five. I think that the book element in this story as far as the publisher aspect and the book reviewer aspect, I think those things really helped me to round it up to a five. I just personally got so much out of it because I'm in that world and I think that if I wasn't a book reviewer or here on booktube that maybe it would have been more of a four star read. The next book that I read in the month of April was The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie which is the first book in the First Law trilogy and I gave this book four out of five stars. This is an adult high fantasy. I had a physical copy of this that I got out from my library as well as the audiobook copy which I accessed through the app Scribd. If you're gonna read this, I definitely recommend the audiobook. I thought the narrator was fantastic. Let me look up who the narrator was. It was narrated by Stephen Pacey, who's the narrator I've never listened to before, but I am a total fan now. I thought he did such a good job. I actually read this as a buddy read with my friend Graf and Chris from Bread and Books, who I will link down in the description box. I have been wanting to read this book for a little while. I had put it off because it's the beginning of a new series, but I just couldn't put it off any longer. I wanted to read it. I've heard such good things about it, mainly from my friend Leanna from Leanna's Library, and she's gone on to read more Joe Abercrombie and loves all of his stuff. And I'd also heard about it from other people, like Daniel from Daniel Green has said that he really enjoyed this trilogy. So I was really excited to read this. This book has a cast of main characters, and I really enjoyed reading from all of their perspectives. All of these characters are morally gray, or at least most of them are. There were only a couple that I thought were like genuinely good people, but even then by the end of the book they definitely had some flaws too. But they were all fascinating and they were all very different from each other. And at the beginning of the book their storylines don't really seem to intersect, but as the story continues they kind of converge towards the end of the book. I thought the world was fascinating and I definitely want to know more about it. Felt pretty different from any world that I had read before. Not like super unique, but it did feel different to me than a lot of the fantasies that I've read recently. There is like an old wizard character who's very powerful but also kind of like a crotchety old man and he made me laugh so many times throughout this book. If you guys have read the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind, he reminded me of Zed. I think Leanna said that too. And Zed is such a funny character. So I found this book interesting all the way through from the beginning to the end, but it's definitely a very character driven book. That would be my one critique and the main reason why I only gave this four out of five stars is because there wasn't like a 
big overarching plot taking you from the beginning to the end of the book. This book was basically all set up, I'm assuming, for the next book. But despite that, I still found it interesting while I was reading it. But once I got towards the end, I realized that this wasn't going to culminate in some big thing that was going to happen at the end of the book. It was just following all of these characters in different places coming together so that they can start the next book on a journey together. So while I was a little bit disappointed in that when I got to the end of the book, I still really enjoyed my time reading it. I loved the characters. I thought it was fascinating. I've heard a lot of people talk about the series as being grimdark or have said that Joe Abercrombie is like really good at writing grimdark. And I didn't particularly feel like this was very dark. I mean, yes, all of the characters were morally gray. One of the characters is like a torturer, like an inquisitor, and he's definitely has a very tough past. But overall for the book, I didn't, it didn't feel very dark to me. Maybe that's just me. I know that I have a tendency to have like a high tolerance for that kind of stuff. But from the way people had talked about it, I was expecting this book to be a lot darker than it was. I definitely want to continue and read the next book in the series, hopefully before the end of the year. Okay, and the last book that I read in the month of April was Now I Rise by Kirsten White, which is the second book in the Conqueror Saga, which I gave four out of five stars. I have a physical copy of this, which was an ARC or an advanced reader copy that I received a couple years ago before it came out, but never read because I'm terrible. But I honestly mostly listened to this on audiobook, which I accessed through Scribd. I did a lot of audiobooking in April because I was traveling. This book takes place not long after And I Darken, the first book in the series, ends. I had read And I Darken twice now because I read it when it first came out and loved it, and I read it before this second book came out in preparation of continuing on the series, and then I just didn't continue. But I really loved Ain't I Darken, and I had high hopes and expectations for this second book in the series. This book's kind of hard to categorize in a genre. I think I would call it an alternate historical fantasy because it's a gender-bent Vlad the Impaler retelling. It's based in the real world, there's no magic in it, and it takes place in real countries like Hungary and in Rome, but it's not historical fiction because it's a retelling. In the first book, you have three main characters. You have Lada, who is the character that's based on Vlad the Impaler, and she's a vicious and strong woman who loves her country. And you have her little brother Radu, who is like a little cinnamon bun and so sweet, but also he's very politically savvy and good at like manipulating people. And in the first book, their father basically sells them away to the Ottoman Empire, and that's where they meet the third main character, Mahmed, who is the son of the Sultan. I'm pretty sure in the first book you get point of views from Mahmed, but in the second book you only see from Radu and Lada's point of views. Maybe I'm misremembering because it's been a little while and maybe I just felt like I knew Mahmed really well and that's why I thought there were point of views from him, but there definitely aren't point of views from Mahmed in this book. So after the events of the first book, Radu and Lada spend all of this book being separated and you basically get two completely separate plots. And I gotta say I was much more interested in Radu's plot than I was in Lada's plot. And part of that is just that I like Radu more than Lada, I think. I admire Lada and I think she's an interesting person, but I have a hard time relating to her. Not that all characters have to be relatable, but I have a hard time relating to her because she is so brutal and vicious. But I also understand that she has to be that way to get what she wants out of the world and to get the world to see her not just as a woman, but as someone who could be a ruler. But I personally just prefer Radu and I enjoyed seeing his storyline more. In this book, Radu is pulled in multiple directions emotionally and my heart just hurt for him. I love him so much and it was really hard for me to see the things that he was going through in this book. This second installment also made me not like Mahmed very much and I feel like at the end of the first book I didn't dislike him like I felt like I understood his motivations more and I wonder if not seeing from his point of view in this book is part of the reason why I just feel like disconnected from him and I don't understand the choices that he made and I have no idea what's going through Mahmed's head at this point and I don't know if I'm supposed to. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm not supposed to because if I don't have point of views from him, how am I supposed to know what he's thinking? 
one of the big plot points or things that happens in this book is like a siege of Constantinople. And I love reading about like battle tactics and about sieges and stuff. So I found all of that really fascinating. I'm pretty sure that a decent amount of what was going on in those scenes was based on history. I know that Kirsten White has said that a lot of the battle tactics that are in the last book of the series are things that really happen. So I feel like that would probably be true for this siege or battle too. That's another reason why I really like this series is because this is a time in history that I don't know that much about. I mean, I'm not like a history buff anyways, but I just really enjoy reading about this time period because it's not something that I'm familiar, familiar with at all. I also wanna point out that there is some diversity in this book. Radu is actually gay and also a devout Muslim. I can't speak for how good of rep it is, because obviously I'm not either of those things and neither is Kirsten White, but I do think that she tried to represent those things well. I am very excited to continue on and read the last book in the series. I heard that the last book is really heartbreaking and while I'm not necessarily looking forward to getting my heart broken, I am looking forward to finishing this series and seeing what happens to these characters in the conclusion. All right guys, those are all of the books that I read in April. It was four, which is like an average month for me. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them down in the comment section. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye. As always, I will have timestamps in the... <clears throat> because it's... A historical um because it's a because it's then then my um and i gave four and i gave this book five and i gave the <laughs> while i gave the, i gave this book five, like i said um <clears throat> <sighs> so many burps bye